That needs to be our new Instagram video right there. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> I'm in control of the video at least. Mm -hmm. For now. For now, yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Welcome back to another episode of This and That, the hair this and that a coffee chat yes with the hair team that was a good start not really <laughs> anyway i'm kelly our, our, four, our 14th episode and we still you still don't know what it's called my last few have been good true this true. one just do you want to try it again I'm leaving all this in. I just want you to know, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to, <laughs> to do it. To do have it. a do over here? Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> it's not going to work now. <laughs> oh. Okay, anyway, welcome back to another episode of This and That, a coffee chat with the Harris. That was a better one. Yeah, somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still Kelly, this is still my dad's got. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right, well, let's see, we have a bit of a half week on economic news this week because of when yes. we recorded last time. Yep. And then we have some uh, fall home selling recommendations if you're deciding to sell this time of year. Yeah. And then I mostly have sports stuff for uh, the rest of this and that. Okay, I have a little bit of sports and uh, we'll play another round of this or that as mm -hmm. well. So uh, kind of light week, but, uh, mm -hmm. and, and we're trying to figure out logistics for next week. There might not be an episode next week because I'm traveling out of town and since and it fall, my travel times fall inconveniently yes. for us to video and for get a video schedule. up. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you want to kick us off? What are we doing first? Let's finish up the week in economic data. All right. So after last week's big news of the Fed cutting mm -hmm. interest rates, uh, it was followed up this week with uh, two things. Mm -hmm. One was consumer spending which increased by 0.2% in August. So analyzed, it's a little over 2% once again. So uh, kind of in line with where the Fed wants mm -hmm. that to be. And then the uh, PCE index, which is the Fed's favorite inflation, it's the consumer expenditure index. It gained 0.1%. Uh, in August and a, a rise of 2.2% year over year. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're looking at the core aspects of, of this, it was up 2.7%, okay. but I, I, I'm not as familiar with this one as I am with CPI, so I don't know how much housing is a core component of this. Right. So uh, I think the Fed would, would be pleased with these numbers overall, they continue to uh, show that inflation seems to be getting closer to their 2% target, okay. and there aren't any signs in this data that uh, inflation's gonna uh, re-explode. So, Which has been their concern about dropping rates too soon. Correct, correct. So next week, uh, we'll be looking at employment numbers to monitor the labor market because that is now becoming their primary concern is mm -hmm. is the labor market so okay. yeah i mean nothing earth shaking but i think mm -hmm. uh not having earth shaking news in the economy portion of this podcast is a good thing good. yeah good yeah. news yeah okay okay well that was pretty easy this week yes it, it, I, I like it when I have less charts to have to put up, but, you know. <laughs> For all the people listening and not watching. Yeah, it doesn't matter to them. Yeah. All right. Well, on the real estate side of things. Um, like we did for our summer selling recommendations, I have three recommendations if you decide that 
autumn is your time to sell your home. And these kind of apply to, you know, anywhere in the country. Um, so some of them may be less so or more so where you live. There's at least one in there that yep. doesn't really apply to here much. Yes. So let's start with that one. Okay. Leaves. If you've got trees that drop leaves in the fall, rake them up, get them out of the way, try to stay on top of them as much as possible for showings. There's nothing like showing up to a property and going, look at all of this work I would have to do if I bought this house. Yes. And I would add one thing that wasn't in, in the recommendations, but right along with that, uh, some parts of the country, like where we came from before, um, as when the rains arrive, it becomes harder and harder to mow lawns. Yeah. And, and so whenever you get that opportunity to rake the leaves and mow the lawn, do both. And if you have one of those mulching machines or there you whatever, go. you might be able to, um, as they say, kill two birds with one stone. I was trying to kill two stones with one bird, but... Uh, close enough. Close enough. Anyway, so, so mowing yep. the lawn, if you have one, yes. is important. And keeping the yard clean. Yes. So, again, not as relevant here, but a lot of other parts of the country, that, that's an important one for the fall. Yes. My next one is days are getting shorter again, not as much light coming in, and so... A good time to go back through the house, double check your light bulbs. Um, if you've got a combination of yellow lights and white lights, try to get them all the same, um, get any burnt out ones replaced. Our photographer told us about yes. uh, a new light bulb where you can actually control, can control the, uh, where in the color spectrum that light, is it a blue light, is it a yellow light, mm -hmm. that, that type of thing. So- uh, You said you could get them at Costco. At Costco, okay. Yes. Not Home Depot, but Costco. Well, I'm sure you could get them elsewhere too. Yeah. But you so, said you can get big packs of them to basically do your whole house at Costco. Yes, so then you don't have Mitch, Mitch, Mitch match, mix mm -hmm. matched. Mismatched. Thank you. English as a foreign language is English. That too. <laughs> Mis mismatched types of lighting, which people, it's, it's the funny what people notice when they're in somebody else's home mm -hmm. and they're looking at it. It's those kinds of things. They probably have the same thing at their house. They don't even notice it. Yeah. And then along with that, um, if the home is occupied and you're going to be there, Open up the blinds before you leave the house for the showing. Again, just another way to get a little bit more light in there, make it feel a little more bright and open and airy um, as it's getting darker again. Mm -hmm. We recommend that pretty much year round. Yeah. Um, you want a brightly lit home for people to yeah. uh, be able to see what the home looks like. Yep. And uh, you don't want it to look like a dungeon. <clears throat> like your home? Well, we do that for filming purposes so that we can control the lighting and we don't have huge shadows cast from behind us. Uh -huh. Yes. Anyway, moving on. And then number three is seasonal decor. And this really carries into the winter selling season as well with the holidays then. But we're kind of at the start of when decor happens. And so I think autumn's a great time to use those fall colors, the reds, the oranges, the yellows, in accent pieces. So in your throw pillows or throw blankets, blankets, you know, places like that, where it can be incorporated in, it can make the house feel a little bit more warm and cozy-ish as temps are, in theory, going down. <clears throat> yeah, it's like living in a hairdryer <laughs> here this yeah. weekend. Yeah, so in other places in the country. Yes. Um, but you also don't necessarily want to play up items that distinctly tell you what time of year it is. You know, if you put a bunch of pumpkins in a house and then your mm -hmm. home is still on the market in January, you're going to be able to tell from those pictures that the home has been on the market for a long time. Right. As we get into like Christmas, same thing with Christmas trees. Try to keep those trees you know, out of the photos or have them in for December and then get new photos. Yes. You just don't want to show your home with seasonal decor items that date how long it's been on the market. 
accent features are a nice touch and less overtly telling you how long a home has potentially been sitting. Yep, absolutely. So, so yeah. you know, go, go down to Walmart or Target and grab get, a few pillows. Yeah, get grab a few pillows, buy a $5 throw, use yep. it as an accent piece. Yep. You know, don't have to keep it long term. Nope. So, or go to a thrift store and see what they have. True, true. Some of my uh, finest finds have been at, <laughs> at thrift stores. So, yeah. Yeah. So those are my three, my three full selling tips. All right. Do you have anything else to add on those? I don't right now. Okay. Yeah. I'm just thinking about how, how our faults fall really fooled us. And then... Yes. Yeah. So when we said it was just barely going to be triple digits last week, um, we lied. 111 yesterday. <laughs> and windy. Thus the hairdryer reference. Yeah. We yeah. were doing an open house and it was hot. It was. Not in the house. Yeah, the house felt nice at 80. Yes. Yeah. Setting up the signs and whatnot. A little toasty. That's why we did it in the morning. Yeah, I was going to say, you picking them up at 1 in the afternoon was the toasty part of that. Yes. Had the air conditioning cranked in the old uh, yeah. Highlander, however. Yeah. So. Good call. That, that you know. Arizona problems, you know, uh, we will share with you in November how it's a lovely 76 <laughs> degrees. Yes. Yes. When the first snowstorm snow comes hit. through the Midwest. Yes, yeah. yes. So we, 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 you know, yeah. we, we put up with a little heat for a few months out of the year to have tremendous weather the rest of the year. Yes. I think it was our latest 105 plus degree day on record. On record. Yeah, yeah. it was very unusual. We were all talking about how unusual to have something that warm this late it's in the late. season. Yeah. 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 So maybe it'll actually cool down now. Well, let's hope so. Yeah. What mm -hmm. do you have next? Sports. Sports. <sighs> well, tell me what you got. <laughs> I feel like it's been a sad week in sports because everyone's retiring <laughs> or officially getting kicked off their team. Well, we did talk about Danny Rick last week. It hadn't been announced then. And it was finally announced. And it came through our time Thursday morning. So Europe time Thursday late afternoon. And I saw it come through and I went, this feels like a bank closure, except one day early. Like late afternoon, throw out the announcement, hope no one notices. Yeah, usually uh, if you're going to publish bad news, you want to do it on a Friday afternoon, just like doing bank, bank closures, closures that we talked about before, uh, because then you have the whole weekend for things to die down. I don't know if it works the same in the sports world, though, because sports, sports world kind of yeah. picks up on the weekend. So Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, that's how it felt to me. Like They were just trying to like throw out this little statement and brush it under the rug and move on and... Well, and it's my understanding is that they basically did it in the middle of the night for Australia. So people in Australia woke up to that news. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what the decision-making process was in the PR department at Red Bull slash B Corp. Like, what was the logic in doing it the way that they did it? I have no idea. Um, Especially when everyone knew for like almost a week leading up to that, that it was going to happen. That's the mystery. Why, why could they not just say, this yeah. is Danny Ricardo's last race with V-Carb. We wish him well. Uh, we're going to do everything we can in our power, to, which they didn't, uh, to make sure he has a great race, you know, yeah. no. that type of thing. Um, so I... I don't know. I, I am going to be curious to see where he goes next. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that again last week. So I think he'll be holding a microphone someplace in the near term. Yeah. And the other retirement announcement was Christine Sinclair from the Portland Thorns. She had already announced her international retirement. And so... Writing was sort of on the wall on this one, but she finally announced that she is retiring from club soccer as well at the end of the season. Yeah, she's 41. What did you tell me? She's not young. 
Yeah, she's been in the in the game for a long time. Yeah, so I have while well, I look for that particular number. As of when she announced her retirement, and so we still have a few games left to go. Um, 195 regular season games played, which is fifth among all players. Uh, 64 NWSL regular season goals, also fifth among all players. Most NWSL goals scored for the same club. Three-time champion, two-time Shield winner, and the first player to score in all NWSL competitions. Okay. Five minutes later. She is 41, yep. Yeah, you don't see too many athletes playing into their 40s at a top level like she has. And in a sport where you have to run as much as you do. Yes. And yeah, absolutely. Keep going. So, you know, one of those where it's like, you know it's coming, but still don't want to see it happen. Yeah, yeah. So. The other, there's a, a Formula One rumor that you shared with me. Which... It looks like it's been shut down. Okay. So we don't want to spread <laughs> discredited gossip. Well, and I feel like it's about Checo. I feel like yeah. Checo gossip has been going around for the last two seasons. And every time it gets discredited. That's true. And it's been, uh, yeah, it's, it's constant. Yeah. Checo rumors and yeah. gossip, so... Talk about another person that never catches a break on how things go and his no. PR team. and This is probably, yeah. It's not been a good, good year for Checo. Even when he's running well, bad things happen. Yeah. So. Yeah. Was... Yes, we missed our Formula One. We want it back. Three more weeks. We'll be there. Yeah, it's a long break. Yes. Speaking of racing, mm -hmm. so the first uh, race of the next round of playoffs occurred today at mm -hmm. Kansas, mm -hmm. and Kansas has become an interesting track where there's multiple grooves that are effective, yes. although it seemed like the top groove was the preferred one today, but there were a number of cars that were going to the bottom groove to make passes, and mm -hmm. some drivers were top groove and one and two and bottom groove and three and four. Um, but uh, Ross Chastain, who did not make the playoffs, ended right. up winning today. Um, William Byron f finished second, had a very good day. Speaking mm -hmm. of rumors, he's been rumored to maybe losing his ride next year. And Are you thinking of Alex Bowman? Or I could be thinking of Alex Bowman. Mm -hmm. We'll just cut that. Who also had a good day. Yes. Yes, he did. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. finished third, and Ryan Blaney finished fourth. And if you remember last week uh, on, on our uh, uh, betting tips, uh, we said that that's not a good track for Ryan Blaney. <laughs> so he finished fourth. And then uh, we said that uh, for Tyler Reddick that that's a really good track. And he had a good run, but then had a number of things happen. Uh, bad timing of pit stops, bad timing of cautions, and he finished 25th. So, as you can tell, this is a superior betting line shop <laughs> and podcast because um, the person that we said this is a good track for finished 25th, and the person that we said this is a bad track for finished 4th. So, uh, we will dispense with making any further uh, NASCAR predictions, <laughs> at least for a little while. Until... Well, I feel like a lot of the favorites going into this race didn't do well. Larson didn't have a good race. You know, Larson cut a tire early in the race and did Never, damage to yeah. the to the uh, diffuser in the back. And although they worked on it, they pitted the car over a dozen times during yeah. the race that to work wild. on it. He just never had speed. Yeah. Uh, the diffuser has become such an important part of this uh, version of the NASCAR stock car. I have fairly strong feelings about that that's a direction that 
NASCAR shouldn't have had it into. Um, it's becoming too much of a race car when you start having diffusers and front splitters and all this type of stuff where, you know, the, the issue they're trying to get rid of the arrow push. So by doing these types of things creates more downforce so that if, even if you're behind a car, you don't end up losing the nose and whatnot, but it, I think they could have worked on it in different ways. And so mm. anyway, uh, but I was going to mention Kyle Larson mm -hmm. and his uh, uh, cut tire that early in the race that just never was able to recover from that. And then the other person that probably had the most self-inflicted wounds was Christopher Bell. Yeah. He was leading uh, the first stage with two laps to go and put the car in the wall and dropped down a fair amount. He still got stage points. Mm -hmm. And then uh, at the end of the second stage, again, with like two laps to go, he hit the wall again. That shows you on the razor edge they are with these cars. But then he dropped all the way out of the points for that stage. He dropped down like to 16th. Yeah. And so he threw away a bunch of important playoff points. Yeah. He still ended up with a decent finish, don't get me wrong. But today could have been a much better day. And if we get to Phoenix in the championship race and he, A, is not in mm -hmm. the, the playoffs at that point or ends up losing by... Well, he wouldn't lose on points because it's whoever finishes first at Phoenix. That's true. Of the playoff drivers. So it would be a, if he gets eliminated before Phoenix. Yeah, you're right. I knew that too. <sighs> okay. <laughs> My other um, person that I think, again, wasn't looking super great going into this round and then had a good race along with Alex Bowman was Chase Elliott starting at the back with uh, having to replace his engine and then finishing ninth. Yes. That was a good... It's a very good run. Good drive for him. Yeah. And while it has multiple grooves, it's not an easy track to pass at. you got to really work hard to work your way up through the field so mm -hmm. yeah good call on chase elliott good mm -hmm. run there yeah so we're at talladega next week talladega which anything can happen mm -hmm. if you can miss the big one you could be a great points day if you're in the big one your playoff chances can take a really big hit yeah and it's still close in points i mean no, oh, yeah. Not much separation happened in this race, and no one won, so no one's locked in. No, I mean, no one in the playoffs won. Yeah. Chase Briscoe's kind of struggling at the bottom of, of the points, but again, he so has... So Austin Cindric. Either one of... Yeah, Austin had a couple also of issues bad day. Yeah. come up today. Uh, but either one of those two could have a great day at Talladega, and some other people have yeah. problems. It can flip-flop those point standings fairly quickly. Or they win. Or they win and they're in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so exactly. There's a lot of things that could happen. Okay. So are we all ready to this or that? Or did you have pop culture items? Not this week. Maybe next week. Okay. Well, I'm setting a goal to listen to Post Malone's <laughs> album this week, so I will... So we can circle back to that conversation Circle back to that conversation, time. yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. So if you watched last week, we started a little game of this or that, uh, rather than this and that, mm -hmm. and uh, so we're going to do maybe five more uh, this week to close out the show, and then... Um, what we're looking forward to for next week? Yeah. So, are you ready? I'm ready. Comedy or drama? Probably comedy, but preference to like a drama with some comedy. Okay. <laughs> Can you think of an example? I mean, I feel like rom-coms aren't that far off from okay. dramas with comedy. So I think the cla 
classic for me as far as dramas with comedy is The Lion in Winter, mm. which is Peter Damn. O'Toole and Catherine Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn won an Academy Award again uh, mm. in, in this. And this was definitely before my time. Oh, definitely. And it's about Henry II and Eleanor of Aquitaine, mm. who's the Queen of England. And they're getting together for Christmas with their three sons. and. Uh, the two of them are arguing because the eldest son has passed away. Who who should be the heir to his throne? And it's a very dramatic piece. And but every time there is a really big piece of high drama, mm -hmm. and it's usually Catherine Hepburn that then provides a line of humor. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not call it a comedy. It mm -hmm. is definitely not a comedy, but it, is, it does have that break the tension with a line of humor okay. type, type uh, film. But, uh, and for me, you know, good comedies are, are rare. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably gonna go with drama. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go with drama on this one. And, and I think it seems like I can rewatch dramas. There are a few comedies that I rewatch a whole lot because you already know the joke. Mm. Although some of the greatest quoted lines are from comedies. Right. Especially like in golf. I mean, people quote Caddyshack all the time. So I was going to say, right, Happy Gilmore, I feel like. Oh, Happy Gilmore and uh, on the bowling side of the Big Lebowski. Uh, you know, I mean, they're, they talk about films that are so quotable that they can't fail. Yeah. So, so and most of the really good quotable movies, not ex exclusively, are often comedies. Speaking of Ricky Bobby last week. They can't fail! Yes. There's another one. Yes, yes indeed. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> I mean, if it's good, it's good. Yeah. Right? I think we're more wishy-washy on this one. Yeah, I, I think so too, so it's probably best we just move on. <laughs> so I think this next one depends on where you live. Okay. Winter or summer? <laughs> that does depend on where you live. <laughs> I think I think a few years ago your answer would have been different. I mean, I'd say like overall summer because more daylight and like more things that you can go out and do. Like I'm not going swimming in a lake in the winter, even in Tucson. I'm not going swimming in a lake in the winter. So. Okay. Yeah, now, now that so. I live here, it's definitely winter. Yeah. Definitely winter. Um, yeah. But yes, this much easier to say winter here than in Oregon. I, I wonder, though, if you like live someplace like Aspen, which, mm. you know, your, your answer is probably winter because if you live in Aspen, you probably ski and that's when you get to do your, your winter stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, here's when we get to do our summer stuff in the winter. Yes. At a much more comfortable. When it's not 111 degrees. Temperature, yes. Yeah. So we get to golf, we get to cycle, we get to run, we get to uh, ride, ride horses, horses. Yeah. you know, all those kinds of things. Yeah, you don't walk out to the barn and have the horses look at you like, what do you want from me? <laughs> yes, which was the response you got today from the just, horses. Yeah, what happened when I went out to check on them before coming over here? They all, like, as I walked by them, all turned and looked at me and then turned their head back forward and I'm like, nope. <laughs> if we don't acknowledge her, maybe she won't make us do anything. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Won't make you do anything. <laughs> okay, I think we're going to have a difference of opinion on this one. Okay. Netflix or YouTube? <laughs> yeah, Netflix. And uh, YouTube. Yeah, I know what you're, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, I don't really watch YouTube videos unless I'm over here and you're showing me something on YouTube. Yes, yeah, and I watch a lot of YouTube and occasionally will go over to Netflix if I've run through all of my 
150 different subscriptions and, and yeah i've got like four people that i'm subscribed to on youtube <laughs> that's how little time i spend on youtube and then every so often i'll go you know youtube hasn't shown me anything from this creator for a while obviously i skipped over a couple of their videos sometimes because it was too long and i didn't have time mm -hmm. at that point or whatever and then you do that a few times and it's like well Oh, maybe they're so yeah, then I'll go out and go to their channel and catch up on a few and then they'll start reappearing on on my feed once again I feel like Netflix is a very curated recommendation list for me at this point because I've watched a lot of like really bad rom-coms on Netflix and so it populates with, <laughs> with lots of bad rom-coms <laughs> like there's this one point where I watched one and literally the same actor popped up in another one. So I watched it because I was like, eh, why not? Nothing else to do. And it was the same story with the same actor, different actress, just set in a different location and they had different jobs. But otherwise it was like the same thing. Well, that's like watching movies <laughs> on the Hallmark Channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same story. Yeah. Often the same actors and actresses. Uh, just different location, different names, different jobs. Yeah. Yes. So I had those on like, all like I think within the same week and it made me chuckle. And it's like, okay, well, don't go into my part of Netflix. You will not find anything that you want to watch. No, I, uh, so mine is riddled with uh, usually like espionage. Yeah, which is why you do need to go into Netflix every so often so that you can watch some of those and then give me your top recommendation out of it and then I can go watch that one. Okay. Like with The Night Agent. Probably yes. wasn't going to watch that until you're like, you should go watch it. And then I did. I was like, okay, that was good. Yeah. So uh, I will say that there are definitely different tiers of espionage movies. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them are, are really good, well-written, good tension. And some of them are like, oh, that is just the stuff dumbest thing yeah, yeah really that's how i feel about what i watch too <laughs> so yeah. yeah okay i'll have to have to go on a little espionage binge and uh see what else to recommend yes well you are also behind on your box to box uh productions full swing oh yeah drive to survive yeah i'm a whole year behind on drive to survive mm -hmm. um, and I was struggling a little bit getting into full swing so I might just have to be in a different frame of mind and try that one again yeah uh, I have not watched the tennis one yet I've heard it was the weakest of the three okay but I have not seen it myself I did watch the full NASCAR mm -hmm. series I haven't watched 100 days to Indy yet yep, I, watched I that should, one. probably should watch that okay See, you do have things to watch on Netflix. I do, but... You just never get over so there. So what usually happens is like, okay, when <laughs> I go over there, then I spend... So, so like, might be 9 o'clock. And then I spend 45 minutes to an hour <laughs> flipping through all the recommendations. Yeah. And then I go, well, now it's too late to watch a full two-hour movie. So then I don't watch anything. And you go back to YouTube. Yes. Or the Food Network and watch Beat Bobby Flay. Yeah. Yeah. It's always on late at night, it seems it's like. It's always on late at night, <laughs> and you know. Okay, uh, dog or cat? Horse. Dog <laughs> or cat? Horse. <laughs> so I feel like growing up, the answer would have been dog. I feel like now the answer is cat. Dogs are high maintenance, and I don't have the energy for that. You know how easy Luna is? Yes. Like, Although she can get very demanding about her <laughs> snuggle time. Yeah, but you don't have to go take her out for a walk five times a day. No. And don't, she takes yeah. care of herself. Yes. And, you know. You, you don't can, even have to feed her because she will catch her own prey if, if, if... Given the opportunity. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, you could leave a thing of food and a thing of water and go away, and she'd take care of herself. That is true. She'd be grumpy with you, but she would survive. Yeah, that grumpiness doesn't last very long. No. You just so. have to sit down and... Yes, and then she'll... She'll snuggle. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I appreciate cats more now. 
I think it depends on the cat an awful lot. That too. She's very much like a dog. She's very much like a dog. Uh, she's very social. Mm -hmm. She talks. A lot. A lot. <laughs> Once she knows you. Yes. And, you know, so there's a real connection that you have with her. Yeah. We, we had a, a client that had both a dog and a cat. Mm. And the dog was great. I mean, the dog was like, oh, you're so, I'm so happy to see you. You're here to play. Yeah. Let's go outside. You yeah. know, and the cat was the most aloof creature. Yeah. And that's always my fear about getting a cat is that if you get an aloof cat. Yeah. That basically wants you to feed them, provide water and clean their litter box. And the rest of the time you can just stay the hell away. Yeah. Um, that's the problem with a cat. And yeah, I mean, there are a few aloof dog breeds. The, the big poodles, the, the standard poodle. Yeah. Yeah. They can be aloof. Uh, my friend has a, it's a Chinese dog and it's like one of the original three breeds of dog. Hmm. Looks like a little red fox and it has a Chinese name, which I'll butcher, so I'm not going to try. I'll flash a picture <laughs> up of one. Uh, can be a very aloof dog. Hmm. Um, so usually when I go over, the dog knows me. Uh, come over, say hi, I'll pet it for 15 seconds and you say, that's enough. Yeah. I'm going over here now. So, but for the most part, most dogs are incredibly social, want to be with their humans, um, happy to see you every time you walk in the door. So all those kinds of positives. So uh, if I had a cat like Luna, yeah, I might answer cat, but I, I'm a dog person. Yeah. I mean. And a big dog person specifically. A big dog person specifically, yes. Um, but dogs tend to like me also. Yeah, that's true. Um, it doesn't matter where we're going in public. <laughs> if a dog sees me, it has to come up and say hello. Yes. And I'm more than happy to have them do that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. This is true. Everywhere he goes. Yep. Dogs find him. Yes. So, all right. And then uh, I, I know the answer to this one, but we'll go ahead and, and do this one. Texting or calling? <laughs> How old do you think I am? <laughs> yeah, texting. Although I will say on days where I've been like really busy or like had to do a lot of emails in particular or that sort of thing, sometimes I'm like, don't text me. Like I don't want to see the notification pop up. Just call me. So... Every so often, I will say, call. Like, I don't want just, like, a bunch of text notifications because that's overwhelming. and I just want them to go away. Uh-huh. So uh, if I ignore you for, like, a week, it's because the texts were overwhelming, and I'm sorry. Just meet up with me, and then we can have the conversation. Now, the, I know that's your preferred way, but I will also say that you're the person that every time you're walking from your dorm room to, to Pronto, I would get a phone call or your mom would get a phone call. The difference is me calling versus someone calling me. Yes. And I was going to also say that sometimes when you're driving uh, from one place to another, I get a phone call yes, for the duration true. of the drive. Yes. Um, I do make phone calls while I'm driving. Yes. Through the speaker, not on my phone. Yes. But, yeah, so your preference is not to be called i get that yeah i usually get a hello <laughs> when i call hey we have work to do we got stuff to do let's go come on <laughs> yeah yeah it's better if i know the person that's calling if it's a stranger calling i'm like why are you calling me i know my phone number's all over the internet but why are you calling me <laughs> it is part of our business i know you can email yeah. me instead. True, true, <laughs> yeah. So I'm probably more on the text side also. Yeah. Um, I do get phone calls from a select group of people um, on a fairly regular basis. Mm. I mean, not like every day or every week or anything like that, but I know that I haven't heard from Andy for a while. Yeah. I'll be who, getting a call from Andy here shortly. That was who came to mind when you said that. Like, yes. Yeah. yeah. 
So. It's an Angie thing. Yeah. Yeah, I've thought about trying that, and then I'm like, hmm, that requires calling someone. <laughs> I haven't talked to it in a while. You know, it probably makes their day. Probably. Uh, I mean, like this week, I had a former employee mm -hmm. uh, reach out to me, uh, knew that we were in real estate, and lives in Arizona, but not anywhere near here. Yeah. And just wanted a little advice on what I thought um, she was being told was accurate or not. And um, I said, you know, the you know, best thing for you to do is interview three different agents. And the funniest part was she says, yeah, I know, I watched your video. Yeah. <laughs> so she had watched our, our home buying yeah. video. And we were able to get her in touch with a, an agent in the area, and they hit it off on like her experience that she was having with this other agent. Yeah. So it's it's really important, as we talk about, is that you find somebody that you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. uh, we're happy that we were able to help her out. And, you know, yes, she texted to reach out to me. Anyway, so it was good to hear from her. I got to talk yeah. to her on the phone uh, and uh, got caught up on what she's doing and yeah. got to share what we're doing here and you know, yeah so it does make a difference if I get a text first like hey do you have a minute mm -hmm. then I can like not be in the middle of something and then feel stressed about like trying to answer a call while I'm you know holding a bucket of grain for a horse or something like that true <laughs> so yeah sometimes we just don't reach out to our old friends and colleagues often enough I think so yeah wouldn't hurt to Maybe do one a week or 10. Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll do one last one. Okay. Sweats or formal wear? I mean, are we talking about on a regular basis here? Just what would you, what would be your preference? You mean sweats because that's comfortable. <laughs> Well, some people like to get dressed up. I mean, I do like to get dressed up, but I need to have a reason to get dressed up. Yeah. I'm all over the comfy clothes, you know, especially when you get a certain age, you just don't care. I still have a section of my closet that's all nice dresses that I haven't gotten rid of, but I haven't worn it. There's a section in my closet <laughs> that also has a lot of your clothes still <laughs> hanging up in it. Yeah, that too. <laughs> well, I haven't had a reason to go do anything lately really since before COVID and it's not like I'm going on a bunch of fancy dates or anything so no no and we don't get you know invited to the marriage ball or anything like that no the last ball I went to was in Vienna so oh pre-COVID why aren't you fancy <laughs> still have that dress <laughs> <laughs> don't think I've worn it since all right. Well, with that, what are you looking forward to this week? So this coming weekend is Tucson Meet Yourself, um, Friday, October 4th through October 6th. And we have not been, but it's always been on my list of events to go to around here. Okay. So from their website, Tucson Meet Yourself is Tucson's Folk Life Festival since 1974, food, music, dance, folk arts. Um, and looking at the schedule, lots of like music, dance, um, also uh, like cooking demonstrations. Okay. So on Friday, they have a preparing and cooking uh, nopalitos. So that's the prickly pear pad. Okay. Um, as one of their events. Um, also in the food section, they have a how to process wild prickly pear fruit for juice, which I thought also looked interesting. Um, well, they're being right out my front door. You can go pick some of that fruit once you've learned how to process it. I've seen some videos on Instagram before, and I know someone who did it, and it looks like more steps than probably not easy I want to do and like all those little needles seem like a nightmare okay um and there's also like a sweet southwest honey talking about honey here 
Um, so those are the food ones, obviously. Those are the ones that stood out to me. Um, but it's really about, you know, all the different kind of cultures in Tucson. And, you know, there's obviously a big Mexican influence here. I think a lot of the times that's what people think about when they think about Tucson. Um, but when you look at what's here, um, traditional Irish music and song, music traditions of the Balkans, Moroccan music workshop, Native American dances, Polynesian dances, uh, Cuba and Latin America dances. So all over the world, just, you know, different cultures and oh, cool. the, the different, you know, sort of elements that they bring to Tucson. And so it's downtown um, most of the day, Saturday and Sunday. I think it starts like midday on Friday. Okay. So. All right. Well, you might have to go check it out while I'm gone. You'll be here Friday and Saturday. Well, I'm leaving Saturday. Okay, you'll be here Friday. Uh, we can go watch the uh, preparing the Polito. The prickly pear? Yeah. Or we're going to film um, a video Friday morning and... Or that. And um, and then I'll be editing it and trying <laughs> to get it out. So... Uh, p because I will be heading to Sholo, as I we alluded to earlier, it's overseed on our golf course mm -hmm. right now. So the golf course is closed for about three weeks as we prepare for winter. I'm sure they are not thrilled about the 110 degrees. No, that did not help at all. We prefer cooler temperatures for the ryegrass to take hold. Um, so while the golf course is closed and we allow the Bermuda to go dormant and we plant beautiful Oregon ryegrass on our fairways, greens, and tees, uh, it's kind of an annual tradition for the, the pro shop to take a group of guys up to Sholo and Pine Top and play three different golf courses there and just kind of hang out and get into cooler weather and... Uh, yeah you know, get some golf in while we can and uh, while we're missing out on playing our favorite golf course here in the Highlands. Yep. So looking forward to that. Some of the snowbirds are coming back. One of my neighbors just up the road will be back. And so we're we're making the trek uh, up to Sholo together and uh, going to hang out. So it'll be good. Catch up from the summer. Yes. And learn all about how hot and humid it was in Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't see that as, well, they're on a lake, yeah. uh, so I do understand that, and the grandkids love to come and, you know, hang out on the lake with grandma and grandpa, so I do get that, but, you know, as far as, it's not cooler temperatures, it's it's more humid than it is here, yeah. so it's not like they're getting away from the heat and humidity of our monsoon. Yeah. Au contraire. Yeah. So, anyway, that's what I'm looking forward to. All right. So... With that, yeah, well, I don't have. Oh, any... you know, we didn't do uh, like and subscribe, and oh yeah, you can do that. Hey, please like and subscribe. <laughs> uh, we're up to eighty subscribers now, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, would love to hit the one hundred mark before the end of October. So, uh, if you can help us mm -hmm. make that move, that'd be awesome. You can also listen to us on a number of top podcast. Uh, yes providers and there's a graphic that's popping up right now for you to take a look at that so um, mm -hmm. listen to us there if you can't watch the video or do both that seems a little excessive but okay that's a lot of us <laughs> it's a lot of us <laughs> i haven't even listened to us on podcast neither have i <laughs> they show up now on my podcast feed oh there you go but... i like that yeah but we did discuss last week that we're more of music people than podcasts, so. Yes, yes, we are. Yes. All right. All right. We have the worst outros. See, our intros are getting, I mean, until today, better. It's our, uh, it's our outros that we have not figured out. Yes. Uh, you know, I, uh, some of the guys I watch, they, have, they say the same thing every time when they leave. Yeah. And, you know, you just know that the video is over and off you go. Uh, we haven't even come close to saying the same thing twice. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure people were ready to turn this video off five minutes ago. We just keep on rambling on. 
That's what edit delete is for. Yeah. Um, I'll cut some of this. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see you either next week or in two weeks. Yeah. So until then, take care. Bye.